Good morning, everybody. It's Hari Swaminathan from OptionTiger.com. It is April 25th, and it's been a couple of weeks since I did a video. I'd gone to India for a short break. I wanted to look at today uh, the ES, ZB, and the VX. So for those of you who may not be familiar, ES is the S&P 500 futures. ZB is the bond futures, the long-term bond. The VX is the VIX futures. So I'm just taking a look at the past weekend because there was quite a bit of stuff going on this past weekend and how some of that has actually played into the market. So let's take a look up until uh, the last Friday, I believe, uh, you know, the sentiment was poor in the sense that people were concerned about the French elections and, of course, various other geopolitical stuff going on. But the French elections, for some reason, have uh, turned, have given given that catalyst to an upward move in the market. So you can see that clearly on the ES on Friday as well. We went into the close uh, fairly down, I believe. Let me just go back a little bit more. Uh, starting Friday, yeah, starting Friday was uh, over here and you can see that it went down and similarly at the same time you can see the ZB is going up on Friday and that's to be expected because stocks and bonds are inversely correlated and in general both of them will move in opposite directions. It's only when they don't move in opposite directions that's when you have to think, hmm, what, you know, what's going on here and that might give you a clue about something else. So in this case, on Friday, stocks uh, gave up and uh, bonds went off into the weekend on a pretty much a you know high level. Then came on Sunday the news that the happy part of it is that um, it's completely different people coming in. Otherwise, I don't know why the markets would have reacted in such a way. That was just like sort of a primary. And so we, we have another round coming up of elections. So regardless, Markets felt good, so you can see in the futures itself, uh, after hours um, itself, it started going high on, on Sunday itself. On Monday, and then, you know, it retraced back a little bit, but once again, you know, it was a decent move uh, on the markets, and, uh, you know, that's where we were on Monday. And today, it seems that the sentiment is continuing, and it's going up there. Now, what I find a little strange is is uh, the behavior of the ZB and the VX, not to a very large extent, but to some extent at least. You can see that bonds obviously were crashing over the weekend and, um, you, you know, when the futures market started. And then once the market started on Monday, so look what happens. Uh, you know, the markets are obviously they're at an elevated level. So whereas the bonds did not did not give up anything further. In fact, the bond starts going up. So when the markets over here, the stocks are going up and the bonds are also going up on Monday. So that's a little bit of a weird thing because they generally don't go up together. And so uh, I think the bond market could be saying something like, hey, this is just the primary. What's the big deal? You know, something like that. Right. So whereas the stock market seems to be a little bit more uh, exuberant about that news. Regardless, and then so now the bond markets have come down uh, today, actually, it's uh, well, it came down in the overnight uh, session. And today it's kind of flat over here. So if you now if you see the VIX futures, the Monday when the market starts, uh, the VIX is like sort of at a high level. But regardless, after the market opens, it, it sort of, you know, comes down and that's okay and then there's very little overnight activity and all of that the VIX falls here so it falls to a low so the VIX falls to a low uh, the bonds falls to a low and the S&P goes to a high I mean so now all three are in sync so which tells you that the market is somewhat in stability mode when you see these things now notwithstanding any in, uh, anything that was not clear in the middle or did not uh, correlate properly in the middle um, it tells you that my, there is stability here. However, now if we go take the look at the VIX index, you can see it's at 10.64. I mean, this is, you know, really at the very, very bottom range of the, of the VIX itself. So everything is saying that there is nothing to worry about. And if we are following geopolitics, I, I just don't believe this to be the case. I mean, there's plenty of things to worry about. Uh, North Korea has its uh, annual 85th annual day and something like that. There's the USS Carl Vinson going. 
I mean, a lot of this is, you know, saber rattling rather, uh, you know, but, but uh, still, you know, there, there is anything can actually um, create some kind of a spark. So what my point is that I believe all aspects of the market are ignoring risk at a, in, a, in, in a very big way at this point. And so there is no time like this to buy some uh, S&P puts, for example, or, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, a VIX call spread, maybe. And even all the stock volatilities, I'm sure, are pretty low. So, you know, this is the this is the real time to be, you know, putting in some uh, either hedging or speculation, uh, some really good trades so that, you know, when something happens, the VIX is going to, you know, spike. The VIX, of course, is a very short term uh, instrument. But when you look at bonds and when you look at uh, uh, the S&P futures, you know, the bonds especially, you know, that's not going to be, um, I mean, that's going to be smart money playing there because very little retail players play in the bond market. So bond money is always considered as smart money. So there is some worry there in the bond market uh, because a couple of these days it did not correlate very well. In fact, yesterday it did not. It's really a good time to get a little aggressive on the put side because you know if the volatility spikes and there's something happens over the next month or two or whatever so you know you can really make a big huge profit so for example what i would say is if you were looking at the uh, smp let's say so we have spx and when you're trading this kind of a trade which is a combination of a hedge and a speculative trade you want to really give yourself enough time. The options, you want to give it, give yourself uh, quite a bit of time, actually, because you, you don't know if it's going to play out in the next couple of weeks. But any time you see the VIX at 10.66 means short term, the risks have been um, totally non-existent as far as the VIX is concerned. And that's just not, you know, not, not accurate at all. So I would say let's go to a uh, either the 51 days or the 86 days. You might find more liquidity at the at the 51 and the 86 on the monthly. So let's go 51 for now and see what it is. So if we if we were to uh, construct a trade over here, uh, these are expensive options. So you you know you have to keep that in mind. So we, but what we can do is to do uh, do it as a spread. So for example, let's say we have 16. Uh, you know this thing expires 16 June. Between now and 16 June, there's quite a bit of time left something could happen which could spike the volatility okay then you can see the plus or minus is 85 but that's at a volatility level of 11.8 uh, percent on this series but you know what would be a i would say a three to five percent uh, drop on the s p yeah that sounds very very likely very reasonable so you want to make a you want to make a debit spread at that point so that you don't spend too much money on these options but instead of 23 20 23 15 you want to increase your profit margins a little bit more by, uh, you know, making it a $20 spread. So when you make it a $20 spread, you're paying 2.85 for that spread. Therefore, your reward is going to be 17.15. Okay, so if you invest, so this is what it, it would look like. And you, you can see that the, you know, the uh, risk on this trade is 2850, whereas your reward is 17,000. So, you know, the risk reward is really good for this kind of a trade and the kicker would be that you have a positive vega so for every point increase in the vix you know you're going to you know kick in uh, 306 um, you have negative theta obviously because you have a debit spread and you have a slightly negative delta because it's uh, you know you're buying a bear bear put so all this is fine you know all this is fine and um, you, you know, for another three four weeks if nothing happens then you know you can think of doing something to it but until the option reaches the final 25 days you you can keep the straight and um, for a small risk of 2.85 you know you have the potential to gain a lot of and granted we don't have to wait for it to become 17 but you know even if 2.85 becomes 5 it becomes 6 it becomes 8 yeah, that's a very very good outcome for the trade notwithstanding i think you know if we have positions that are uh, structured to the long side of uh, the trade then this would be some kind of a hedge to those positions so that's what i wanted to cover today hopefully this was helpful if you have any questions please email us info at optiontiger.com and if you like this video please do share it with your networks thank you